Hello, welcome to this week's paper review with me, Raphael Honigstein. Apologies to those of you expecting a more polished, more rounded, infinitely bolder presenter today. James Richardson is currently on holiday, speeding off piste, knee deep in snow. I'd actually thought he'd kick that habit. Hmm, those TV celebrities. Anyway, this week saw the second instalment of the first legs of the Champions League last 16 matches. We start with Tuesday night, of course, when Bayern Munich, a team from nowhere that very few people knew anything about, humiliated low-flying Arsenal on their own patch. Bayern cracked the whip, Rod Marker in Spain. While one or two of the restless locals might have secretly welcomed their ass getting punished that way by the black-clad nighttime visitors, the English have a reputation for that sort of thing, let's face it. Bild was sure this was anything but Her Majesty's pleasure. Did you see that, Queen? Bayern are kings of London. Or Arsenal London, as my countrymen insist on calling us in Wengerside. The whole of Europe could see Bayern's many strengths, gushed Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung after the 3-1 win. The great movement in both directions, the ability to take full advantage of any mistake, their technical class, their goal threat from almost everywhere. Having won only their first ever game in the British capital, can your Pankis and his men come back for a second one in Wembley, they wonder? Bayern CEO Karl-Heinz Rummenigge made the point that the German national team of 1996, Kunz, all of them, were staying at the same London hotel when they celebrated a European Championship final win in classic Teutonic style, with plenty of beer and Hof. But what of Arsenal though? Wenger has sold the magic, they reckon, and that he's failed to pull out a few suitable replacement rabbits in recent years. Well, they are yet to see Jovinho, of course. FAZ's broadsheet colleague Süddeutsche, by contrast, took a very different angle. Actually, uh, they didn't. A demonstration, a message, they say. Bayern have unfinished business in the Champions League and they know that their ambitions are well founded. Big Bayern, Europe is afraid, says Bild. And big your pinkers, gunning for the trouble. Will he leave Guardiola any more titles to win? Hmm, good question. Maybe Pep can wrestle the fourth spot trophy of Wenger next season. Wembley moves closer, says Kicker. An interesting take on geography. And a spare sidebar for reserve striker Mario Gomez, who can't get into the side because of Mario Mandzukic's great form. I know how Gomez feels, says Mandzukic, with a knowing nod to Justin Bieber. But am I supposed to say I want to sit on the bench? Ironically enough, Bayern's Mario brothers could both find their progress blocked by a new alpha male firing in goals and maybe burning barrels at them next season. Borussia Dortmund striker Robert Lewandowski is close to agreeing terms with Bayern Munich, say Bild. Makes you wonder, who of the three will lose out here if this transfer does go through? My best guess is that just like in the video game, the donkey will get it. In fact, the next campaign could see an even bigger squeeze up front for Bayern. The Bundesliga interests me, says Slatan Ibrahimovic. Bayern are tempting. Well, he could join up with Pep there, the man he once described as the worst manager I've ever had. A clash of ego won't be a problem, because Ibra has adopted a more modest, humble outlook in Paris. I am the greatest after Muhammad Ali, he says. And I thought Buster Douglas had that spot. Talking of Ibra, Wednesday night saw the clash of two of his 43 former clubs. Conspiracy theorists will tell you that UEFA always fix it so that the team he has just left wins the Champions League. Ridiculous. Or maybe? A dream Milan, say Gazeta after the 2-0 triumph from the Rossoneri. Great pragmatism against Barca's possession. A masterpiece of tactics and heart from Allegri. Before the match, Milan on a Silvio Berlusconi, despite earlier misgivings about man-on-man -man action, had called for someone shadowing Lionel Messi's every move. After Milan's support result against a surprisingly lacklustre Barcelona, however, Corriere dello Sport was pleased to report that Milans were the true Martians of the night, while Messi was null and void like most people's betting slips. In Spain, Mundo was shocked. Barca suffer a mean defeat they will need all their magic to progress to the quarters. No excuses, said Sport. Frightened to death in us. And what a shock, this is not Barca, says Marca. Barcelona played their poorest game in five years, only a single shot on goal. Elsewhere on the very same night, there was a truly awful gala show. The audience looked bored, the performances labored, and the so-called big stars failed to deliver. It was all so low on quality and entertainment that those watching wondered what was the point really. 
But let's leave the Brit Awards aside for a minute. Over in Istanbul, Mr. Jones had a thing going on. Yes, German Jones scored an equalizer for Schalke that had the Royal Blues cheering. A courageous showing, a deserved result, said Kicker. Finally, let's look to France, where talk is already focusing on PSG v Marseille on Sunday, the possible debut of one David Beckham. Asked for his opinion by L'Equipe, Marseille's shy and retiring Joey Barton thought that Bex was a super ambassador for the French league, but perhaps no longer the same athlete he was five years ago. Does he admire him? No. His leather trousers, fancy shoes and blonde locks are definitely not my style, says Joey, but he is probably the best crosser the game has ever seen. Mm. I prefer Frogger. And Lederhosen are definitely underrated. On which note, I'm off for today. Join us next week when James Richardson, or whatever his name is, will stand in for me. Goodbye.